Welcome. In this video, I'd like to return to the topic of Zotero and show you just a few tips and tricks that might make you a bit more efficient in the use of this very valuable application. Let's get started. Here, I'm displaying my Zotero application and I have a collection that I've named Zotero Practice. And in this collection, there are what looks to me to be four items. If I want to know for sure, I can click just on the name of the collection. And in the right hand side, I see that there are four items. Another way to do this, if I've already selected an item in the collection, I can use the Command A keystroke on a Mac, the Control A keystroke on Windows to select all of the items in that collection. And then I can see that there are four items selected from the collection. So, sometimes it's useful to know how many items you have either in your entire library or in a particular collection. Now, this first item, holding on to steel, Pittsburgh culture in the age of globalization. I acquired this item and its associated Adobe PDF file from my university library. But in bringing the data from the library into my Zotero database, the capitalization of the title is in title case. I need it to be in sentence case because I intend to use this item in a citation and reference in an APA formatted paper. So, I have a choice. I could either retype the title or I can point to the title, but I'm careful not to click yet. And while I'm pointing at the title and the title is highlighted, I can right click and choose sentence case. Now, only the first word is initially capitalized but I need Pittsburgh to also be initially capitalized for two reasons, because it is a proper noun and also because it's the first word in the subtitle of the paper. So, and then once I've changed the lowercase p to a capital P, I just click out in another field and that information will get saved. Now, I clicked here in the author's name field because sometimes when bringing information from the library or Google Scholar into the Zotero database, not all the fields populate correctly. Sometimes the author uh, usually not the first author, but sometimes subsequent authors get ignored in the transfer from the library into my Zotero uh, bibliographic data. So, there's an easy way to add another author to this record in my Zotero database. I could click the plus sign next to the current author and now I have a field in which I can type the surname and the first name of the co-author. Or, when clicking in the name field of the first author, I can press Shift-Enter on a Windows computer, Shift-Return on a Mac, and I get a duplicate author field. And here, I could fill in the information for the co-author. Now, I'm just practicing here. There really is no co-author for this paper. So, I'm going to delete that extra field. 
All right. Here's a, another trick that I don't use that often, but every once in a while, it becomes really helpful. Sometimes I want to double check whether this information is accurate because it came to me from the university library database and I like to double check things. So I want to go to the publisher's web page for this article. And I can do that by clicking the DOI field name here. Not the DOI itself, but the name of the field. So I'm clicking literally on that word DOI. I'm then taken to the publisher's website that or web page that's been associated with that digital object identifier. And I can double check the information here and confirm that, yes, there's only one author for this paper. Now, there's another trick. It doesn't come up often because usually I insert citations and then create the references lists in Microsoft Word using my Zotero menu that I've uh, that was created when I installed the Zotero connector for Microsoft Word. But sometimes it's helpful just to drag and drop information from my database into another document I'm writing. Maybe I'm writing a email message to someone and I just want to drag and drop either the citation or a full APA style reference. To do that in Zotero, I just select one of my items and I drag and drop it into my email uh, application, or in this case, I dropped it into Microsoft Word. And what I get is a properly formatted APA style reference entry for that item. Now, what was important here is I configured Zotero so that when I export data from my Zotero database into the other application, the exported data is formatted in APA style. I did that by going into the preferences for Zotero, going to the export tab, and selecting that when I export data from Zotero, such as with a drag and a drop, I want it to be in APA 7th edition style. And I have some other styles already installed on my computer, but I most often write in APA version 7 style. I hope these few tips and tricks are useful to you. I don't use them all the time, but when I do use them, I feel a little bit proud of myself because I saved just a few seconds in either reformatting information in my Zotero database or creating a, an APA style reference entry in a message or a, another short document that I'm writing. Until we meet again in a future video, I wish you the absolute best in all of your academic work, particularly in your use of Zotero to manage your research data and to accurately create the citations and references that you need in your academic paper. Bye for now. Mika, you're a pretty dog. Here's your favorite, a pepperoni treat. Yes. You're a good dog. Would you sit down for me, please? Oh, thank you very much. So pretty. So pretty. Ah. Okay, sit down again. Now shake, please. Oh, thank you. What a beautiful paw you have. I love you.